EDIC was the former Deposit Protection Fund Board, popularly known as DPF. Started its journey way back in 1986. Started its operation in 1989. And uh, all this was prompted by some bank failures at that time. There were a series of bank failures. So the government first tried with the consolidated uh, approach. That's why we have consolidated bank. But it was strongly felt that we need a deposit protection fund board. That's how DPF started. And uh, DPF has been in this journey over uh, and it was actually driving a mandate we call Paybox Plus. It means it will provide insurance for the depositors in the, in the unlikely event of a failure. And two, it can be appointed as a liquidator once a bank fails. From 2008, there have been this idea which was smoothed that we need an independent deposit insurance scheme. That's when the idea of KDIC was smoothed in 2008. Then in 2010, we invited a team of experts from the International Association of Deposit Insurance where we are the founding, one of the founding members of the International Association of Deposit Insurance, which is a standard setting body. Personally, actually, I sit in the board and I chair one of the key committees called the Membership Relation Committee. And uh, they sent us experts to come and look at where we are and where we are supposed to be. And in their report, they came up with five recommendations which we shared with the National Treasury, and that actually gave now birth to KDIC. First, they say you need to be operationally independent. Second, they said you need an independent governance structure. Three, they said we need to come with our own legislation. And four, they said we need now to upgrade our mandate from being a Paybox Plus to what they call a risk minimizer. And then fifth, we are told now we need now to be ourselves as KDIC both operationally, legally, and mandate-wise. KDIC is always at the forefront to understand what each institution is undergoing and to be able to detect any signs of distress in that institution and move immediately to resolve those issues. As a risk and examination department, our mandate is to ensure that the, the risks of the banks, which are our member institutions, are detected in good time and where possible we can intervene to ensure that those problems or those risks that have been identified are rectified. Resolution is one of the key directorates in KDIC and the resolution involves looking for resolving troubled financial institutions. And when you are resolving, you have looked at a bank, a commercial bank, or a deposit taking microfinance, and it has started showing some challenges. So central bank will appoint KDIC and give them the mandate to try and come up with a way so that these institutions' problems can be resolved. Corporate Services Department is charged with the role of ensuring that uh, KDIC has the right people with the right skills and the right experience and the right attitude to deliver on, on the mandate. We have had a number of stakeholder engagements with the, our member institutions, our young uh, members of the society, the general public and these have been uh, targeted engagements to ensure that each category of our stakeholders benefits from what we have in store for them. Currently we have 55 member institutions. These are 4 to 1 commercial banks. And then we have one mortgage finance. And then we have 13 microfinance banks. The first risk that can make a bank to fail 
is capital adequacy. So those banks that have been underfunded, yeah, there is that risk of capital adequacy. Number two, we are also looking at the risk of asset quality. This is non-performing loans. These are banks which have dished out loans, and these loans turns out to be toxic, and they're not performing. So out of that non-performing loan, the banks can also fail. And you remember that the money that the banks normally lend out is m the money that they have collected from depositors. So that risk, if they have lent out money, which later on turns out not to be non-collectable, it will lead to another risk which we call liquidity risk. This is now where you have all your assets locked in long term, and when the customers or depositors come for their money, they cannot get that money. The resolution, we have three stages. The first stage we call receivership, then we have what we call liquidation, and we have what we call widening up. So when we are doing those three stages, the first stage of receivership, you are trying to look at the best option. How can you make sure that this institution survives and goes back to the market? Then, after you now look at the receivership, you may find this institution, it is good. It can go back to the market, like what happened to Chase Bank. Part of it went back to the market. Then there is that what we call a bad bank, the one that now cannot be taken over by anyone. So in, liquid, in liquidation now, you have seen this bank, there is nothing can be done. So you embark now on selling the assets of that institution and paying the depositors and also the creditors. Then after you do now the liquidation, you go to the last stage, which we call widening up. At widening up, what you are saying, all the assets of this institution, we have realized what we could have done. There is nothing that is remaining. So allow us now to say there used to exist an institution called B-Bank. So you'll apply to High Court, then the High Court will allow you to wind it up. We want the bank to be resolved. That's why we call ourselves a resolution authority. We call ourselves not, not the people who wait for the body to go and bury it. We are the doctors who want to make sure this body goes back to the streets. And that is what we want to assure Kenyans. But in the unlikely event, you may find that the, the, the percentage that will go into liquidation will be out of maybe 100 organs, maybe two or three organs which will go there. Because like now we have what we call the transfer and exclusion, the purchase and assumption model, which we applied in Chase Bank, where 75% of the bank was taken over by SBM. So 75% is now in the market. 25% we, we are trying as much as possible to recover and add onto the 75%. So there will be no organs we are going to throw out. Maybe the only one we'll throw out will be a very small organ that you may realize you may not even need. We may say that one, we can even sacrifice it. KDIC has now put up a new strategy plan. In that strategy plan, it's clearly spell out what it needs to undertake. Uh, that to include on-site uh, inspection will also be undertaken to ensure that uh, when and where it's necessary to do so. And they'll also continuously continue to monitor off-site in inspection uh, materials that are shared with the central bank also. And to ensure that they strengthen the human resource capacity of KDIC and by so doing, we also want to compare with the best institutions uh, worldwide uh, to make sure that we apply the best practices. That includes also issues with, we want to monitor the, uh, the banks or the financial institutions and ensure that when charging premiums, they will be more or less on risk basis. So premiums going forward in the future will be uh, best. In our annual budget, we have always uh, set aside a proportion that is supposed to help connect us to the society within which we are operating. And in this, we have uh, two approaches. One is where we receive applications from uh, would-be beneficiaries. 
clearly telling us who they are, what they do, and the kind of assistance they would be expecting from us. We have, in the previous years, been able to fund a number of uh, community-based organizations. We have also a second approach where, as an institution, we identify one activity. Currently, our focus has been to identify an activity that is re related to the Big Four agenda. In the last year, we were able to support uh, maternity health care in uh, Tanariva County. The coverage ensures that uh, in case, just in case, the, in the unlikely event that anything happens, the deposits are properly and uh, secured. It means wider coverage, bigger coverage. But we want to assure Kenyans, KDIC is there for them. And as much as we'll be happy with the review of the coverage, let's also work towards not reaching that uh, status. We don't want the banks to be liquidated. We want the banks to be resolved. That's why we call ourselves a resolution authority.